Our speaker today is Jim Carter of Park Run. He mentions that Park Run is a global fitness and well-being phenomenon. Please join me in welcoming our speaker. Well, thanks very much, Bev, and happy anniversary, that's, uh, that's for sure. A major milestone, 55, wow. Um, and thank you, Bev, and thanks to all the SACPA people, the board, uh, for inviting, inviting me and the Park Run people to speak to you this morning, or this afternoon, I guess, about, uh, about Park Run, truly a global phenomenon. What we're going to do is just go through a little bit, uh, what we're going to do this afternoon is talk about what is Parker Run? The importance of volunteers, very much a volunteer driven organization. About Park Run, its mission and how it works, Park Run events and milestones, the background, growth, and history of Park Run. It's a fairly young organization, only about 20 years old, actually. The reasons for its success uh, across the globe. Um, uh, in about 26 countries at this point, and about our own Henderson Lake Park run that we run in Lethbridge every Saturday morning at 9 o'clock. And then, as, uh, as usual in a SACPA presentation, we're going to end up with a Q&A, and you can ask all the good things you'd like about park run, running, or, or whatever you'd like, like to, to ask about. So, let's get into it here in terms of what is park run. Park Run is free, and as, uh, as we like to say, and as if you tune into the, the website of Park Run, um, the first thing that you'll see is it's going to be free forever for everyone. And that's, that sort of sums up a lot of the core meaning of Park Run. It's something for everyone, and it's always going to be free and accessible to everyone in the world. It happens every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. local time. I say 9 a.m. local time because whether you're here in Canada, in Lethbridge, or in London, England, or Melbourne, Australia, or Poland, or Japan, I'll go through the countries actually at the end, it's always at 9 a.m. local time. So if you happen to be in one of those locations at 9 a.m. local, tune into a park run, get down to the park, and enjoy the, uh, the welcoming atmosphere of the people in the country that you're in. So it's truly a global phenomenon. It's inclusive, uh, it's open to all ages and abilities, that, that's for sure. It's not selective in one way at, at all. It, the park run events are timed and the results are recorded, but it is not a competition, and I'll, I'll say that, I'll probably say that a few times. This is not a competition, it's about participation. We, globally, we time it, we started timing right from the day one, uh, because people like to know how they're doing, some, some do, some don't, whether you're walking or running or jogging, uh, and it allows you to um, build on your performance. It's sort of a, a record of how you're doing, and uh, you can enhance your performance from that point on, if you wish to. The, one of the key factors of Park Run is it's 100% volunteer driven. It's, um, it's organized by local volunteers, it's run by local volunteers, and I'll talk a little bit about that later. And as I said, it's not a race. The volunteers, it's uh, first and foremost, when every, every day at Park Run, every Saturday morning, for example, here and around the world, one of the first things we say is, let's welcome the volunteers, because well, the, the volunteers make it happen. They're the engine of, uh, of Park Run globally. And it's... Uh, uh, as I say, it's organized and run by volunteers each week. A number of roles are performed. We have timers, we have a little, we have a computer timing system for the event around, it's a common system around the world. And we have scanners, tail walkers. I should point out the tail walkers are very important. They're at the end. No one is ever last in a park run. So uh, you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about being, uh, being last or that sort of thing. The park run with that bright orange jacket, and you see, actually you see an orange jacket, although I don't, uh, you might recognize that fellow on the far right there, I'm not sure, but uh, <laughs> he's peeking, he's bending down there, but uh, anyway, Mike, uh, Mike always wears an orange jacket. But, um, and by the way, volunteers, volunteerism is so, so core that it, it's, um, 
it's something we we say it's it's not just about running it's not just about walking but it's also about volunteering and uh, and also spectating too if you want to come out and spectate at a, at a park run that's great too but volunteerism is so so important to our our overall system Park run in Canada. Right now we have 48 park runs in Canada. Uh, it's, it's a pretty new thing to Canada. Uh, in 2016, actually, it started in Kelowna, BC, then moved uh, quickly to, uh, to Calgary, the Nose Hill Park Run. You'll see the listing of park runs in Alberta. We now have seven. Two very recent ones, one the Millennium Park Run, which started in, in uh, Canmore, Alberta, about two weeks ago, and uh, the Sheep River Park Run, uh, which I think starts this week, and that's in um, uh, Okotoks, actually. So Okotoks is going to host their own, very own park run, and uh, they're, they're right across the province. Of course, we're Henderson Lake Park Run in our beautiful park in the center of uh, Lethbridge. Strathcona Island is in, uh, in Medicine Hat, actually, Medicine Hat, Alberta. George Lane Memorial Park Run is in, um, I believe, um, High River. I think that's the High River one. Sheep River, as I said before, Nose Hill in Calgary. Uh, and River Valley Park Run is in Edmonton, uh, Alberta. So that's, uh, that's the lineup. And we hope that it'll grow. There's many other communities, such as Red Deer. We've talked about Red Deer uh, to numerous people. And maybe someday they'll, they'll creep into that uh, location, too. So, but it's really great to see Alberta, Alberta getting um, park runs too. The mission, the mission is, of, um, this is all about happiness. I'm talking about happy things, I'm not talking about controversial things this morning. I know often uh, Ellen and I have uh, been in, uh, had the, the fortune to be uh, with the Sac Paws community for a few years now. Uh, we've been here about five years in, in Lethbridge. But Often there's controversial topics. Uh, this is not one of those, I don't think. Uh, we'll wait for the Q and A's, but uh, it's uh, <laughs> because I've uh, heard a lot of Q and A's around here too. But um, it's uh, it's something. It's all about creating a healthier and happier climate. That's right in the mission statement of the organization. You'll hear that stated, you know, throughout their website. But it's uh, it's very true. We're here to create smiling faces every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. local time around the world. It's all about improving health and well-being through physical activity. And it's all about socialization too. And it's, so it's not just a fitness activity, it's bringing people together, bringing diverse people together. We encourage everyone from the community to come, uh, come to our, our park runs um, from every walk of life, every ability, every age. You only have to be four years old to be a park runner, registered park runner. So, and uh, there's no maximum age, by the way. So uh, we have park runners, walkers. Uh, one thing I should say, uh, just caught myself right now I say park run park run is the name of the organization but we love to have park walkers and it's something we're encouraging more and more globally is to get people out to walk in fact in Henderson Lake we have about maybe about um, 20 to 30 percent walkers every week so that's that's so good to see um, as I said it's free it's outdoors it's in a it's in a green environment it's always in a park environment we never cross roads um, that's uh, that's sort of by rules globally. We never cross the road. Totally safe. Um, you don't have to. In fact, our, our good people in the city of Lethbridge take pains to make sure that every every Saturday morning, even in the winter time, that our course is nicely cleared off. The pathway around Henderson Lake is cleared off, whether it's ice or snow or goose poop or, or whatever it may be. They do their best to keep things pretty clean for us. So that's a, that's a, that's a good one. Um, it also break down, it breaks down barriers to exercise by creating an inclusive environment. Often, um, sporting events around the world these days are extremely competitive, extremely organized, lots of rules, lots of terms of, of reference and, and guidelines and all that sort of stuff. Not us. That's, that's not our big thing. It's just come out and uh, do whatever you want to do. If you want to walk, you want to jog, you want to just chat, just want to volunteer, that's great too. It's all about getting out, socializing, getting with other people, getting to know your community, and, and having fun. That's, that's what it's about. Uh, it's easy. 
You register, it takes about one minute on the website. You turn, tune into Park Run Canada and you, you print off your personal barcode. Looks like that. And uh, you go to your Park Run, whether in High Anderson Lake or Italy or Germany or something like that. And when you go through the finish line, you you hand it in and it gets scanned and your time is, is taken by timers at the end of the end of the run. And in about two hours or so, if you tune into your website, you also get an email and it'll say your result and uh, what your time is. So, okay. Very easy. This is sort of the steps of a typical Saturday morning a little bit, maybe about 10, 10 2 or 20 2, 9 in the morning, and that's, that's what happens. People arrive. It's very traditional in Park Run around the world to arrive just before 9 o'clock. And uh, our, Ellen and I have a, a real appreciation of that because we showed up to a Park Run in Ireland. Uh, this is about, maybe about six years ago. And we were just visiting, and we, we, we saw this park run in this little, uh, little place in Ireland near a university. And uh, we showed up at about 10 to, I think, something like 10 to 9, and there was nobody there. And then the one person came up and, and uh, he said, is this where the park run is? And he said, oh, I thought, we, we thought maybe he was one of the organizers. He wasn't, he was from Australia. <laughs> so he was looking for the park run too. And then all of a sudden, about five minutes, three minutes before, the organizers came out and look at his split about 80 90 people came out of the blue and we had a park run at nine o'clock in the morning and here we go that's that's fairly traditional although if you come to our park run there's a little more prior organization to organization to it than that so yeah we assemble we give a little briefing about safety sometimes there's safety issues and uh, Mike tells us all about the safety issues he's our uh, route check uh, check person make sure the route uh, how the status of the route is every Saturday morning and uh, we relay that to the people there might be particularly in the winter time there might be some issues by the way we do this every Saturday of the year whether it's winter or spring summer or fall we are there at nine o'clock one of the beauties of park runs is it is Park runs are routine. It happens every Saturday at the same time, same location, same route. That's important to a lot of people. And it's also important to embedding an idea of, of a fitness regime to get that, that routineness to, uh, to the fitness regi regime. Um, results, as I said, we do, uh, do, do um, put results on the website. What you're seeing there is the results from our park run last week. I think that's right, uh, Katrina. Yeah. Uh, so you'll see uh, maybe some names you recognize um, or not. <laughs> so that week, I believe there's about 50, 55 runners and uh, runners, walkers. And uh, we take great pride in the fact that our results, our average time is about the highest in Canada. And you might say, oh, that's kind of weird because you want people to run fast. No, that's not really the, the situation. We want people to participate. The more, that, the more walkers we have, we think that's a great thing. So our average run time or walk time in uh, overall on a, a Saturday morning is about 36, 37 minutes uh, compared to some locations in, uh, in some parts of the world where it's more like about 30 minutes. So, but... Um, we, um, I, I should point out here, we're talking about results. Um, uh, one of the greatest, the biggest promoters of park runs in the world are actually uh, some major athletes like Paula Radcliffe, a famous Olympian gold medalist in the marathon. She's an advocate for um, park run around the world. So is Andy Murray. If you're a tennis star or a tennis person, I should say, playing tennis uh, in Lethbridge or, or wherever, you might recognize that name. He's an Olympian too. He's also a, a British uh, tennis star and he comes out to park run routinely and endorses and promotes the idea of a park run as a part of a, a healthy, healthy lifestyle. Milestones are important. Why are milestones important? Because this is about participation. It's not about how well you did, the performance that you did that day. The performance is only important to you. And, it may, and that, that may not be important to you either. But being there, that's the thing. And these shirts, 
And you can see those two red, or three red shirts. Ellen's got a red shirt, Mike and, uh, and Barb. These, are, these ones are volunteer shirts. And it shows that so there's 100, vol so 100 volunteers. He's done 100 volunteer uh, events, OK? So that's, that's, that's quite a few. And they go all the way up to 500. So if you have 500 runs, we honor participation. 500 runs, 250 runs. 100 runs, 100 volunteers, et cetera, et cetera. So we honor and celebrate participation. The growth. This, uh, this started in 2004, not that long ago. and was started by a gentleman by the name of Paul uh, Simon Hewitt, originally from South Africa, moved to, uh, to England, fairly um, um, a very successful entrepreneur in, in England, uh, and also uh, had a love of running for right, right from a youth stage. And uh, at one point in, in his life, he had a, a really bad injury. He um, suffered from some fairly severe depression. And he said, uh, geez, we've got to get out in the park. I've got to get, bring my buddies together, and we're going to get out and do a park. That park had, happened to be a park called Bushy, uh, Bushy Park near downtown London. England, and uh, he brought 13 of his friends together. They had a park run, and they timed it. And at that time, it was called the, the London Time Trial. That's all they called it. And then um, uh, Paul said, you know, as it grew and said, geez, I mean, more and more people are coming each week. And uh, it expanded really quickly. And it just uh, it built an organization around that. And the Park Run uh, community started the whole over, overall organization. To this date, he is the man that is the engine of it. And he has many other, many other people that um, are with him and uh, have the same common mission uh, instilled in them, and that's to make this free, free, forever, for everybody. The growth has been exponential. It's been huge. You see these, Katrina's put these uh, stats together for us here. In 2022, eight, there's the eight millionth person registered for Park Run worldwide. This is incredible. 250,000 people have volunteered worldwide. Park Run is the largest running event on the planet, and just uh, I caught a, a, a point, it is the largest sporting event, single day sporting event in the world now, by far. Last week, just says uh, they have, if you like stats, <laughs> Park Run International has stats. So every week they have stats of every, of, of every week's Park Run. And uh, one of the stats, for, for, for example, last, uh, last Saturday, the second, the second of September, there was 294,000 runners and walkers worldwide and that ran, walked, jogged at 9 a.m. local time. So that's that's an incredible growth from those 13 runners that that uh, dropped into Bushy Park on uh, in 2004. And you see those walker numbers? Those walker numbers are going up. In fact, if you come out, um, we celebrate walkers. We have now volunteers that wear park, park walk uh, vests. So we have a whole bunch of different vest colors. But um, we have blue park walk vests. And uh, um, they, they're there in order to uh, make people comfortable you know, to talk, chat to people while they're walking around the, the two Loop Henderson course. And it's, uh, it's just an added thing. We love walkers, that's for sure. Here's some of the, the countries around the world. Um, don't look at that Norway thing. I know it's Knut uh, caught me on this one. On their national website, we're going to have to fix that. The Norway flag is not correct. But uh, anyways, if, if you're from Norway, sorry about that. Um, but if you go, <laughs> okay. If, sorry? No, I just said sorry. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so if you want to, if you go into the website, you'll see the full 26 uh, flags uh, and uh, all the various uh, event locations in those countries. So again, if you're going going on a on a holiday, tune into that website and uh, bring along your your uh, personal barcode, and you're off to the races on a Saturday morning at 9 a.m. local. Um, reasons for success: it's uh, it's free. There's, it's, there's no big rules. 
uh, you can go at your own pace. It is what you want it to be. I think that's that's what they always say about park run is that uh, you don't, there's no, there's no stress. There's no stress on performance or anything like that. It's a social interaction thing and, and coupled with fitness, that's for sure. Um, geez, who's that person? I, I've seen that person before too. That, by the way, we, we have uh, a great, uh, a great local uh, um, a Facebook uh, site, courtesy to Katrina here, our communications expert in Park Run locally, and uh, also we have a national feed too. So, in fact, that was one of uh, one of our big national feed photos uh, that got on Park Run International. Barb coming up to the finish line with all that gusto. That's really good. <laughs> no photoshopping there. No, that's that's real. <laughs> she was still working hard. She can work hard and still smile at the same time, so that's good. Um, it is a streamlined approach. It's very, very simple. That's one of the key things about park run is its, its simplicity. It helps tourism locally. Um, I, I say that, maybe not so much so in Lethbridge. Like I said, we had about 55 people out last week. Bushy Park, every single week they have over 1,200 park runners and walkers. It's a huge event. And it's a way of life in UK and Australia, by the way, and, and South Africa. Uh, there's over, over 700 park run events in the United Kingdom today. It is absolutely huge. And you can imagine if you have 1,300, 1,400 people each week, the number of volunteers that you need to make that run. It's about 50 to 60 volunteers each week, a huge organizational apparatus locally that makes that happen in London. And in UK, they have many, many uh, like it, you know, 800, 900, 1,000 participants each and every week. That's why we say it's such an uh, immensely uh, successful global event. Um, here's some stats from, uh, from Henderson Lake. Um, uh, I won't go into the, uh, the, uh, the details of this, except for that finish time. We're, we're proud of that finish time. It's 36 minutes, one of the highest finish times in Canada. And uh, yes, we do have fast runners, but, and that's okay, but we like to have those, uh, those walkers too. It's so important. We like, to people, we like people to come out and participate. That's what it's about. And we have record, it, it always shows who has the fastest time. We never ever celebrate who comes first, second, or third. That's not part of the lingo. So here's a little bit, Park Run, uh, and this, uh, this, this um, sentence at the top is important. It actually comes from the National Health Service of, uh, of England because there's very much a direct tie between the National Health Service in England and Park Run. They've developed a formal partnership uh, whereby GPs, general practitioners in, in the UK and now in Australia, the Royal Academy of, uh, of um, uh, the Royal, Royal Academy of uh, General Practitioners in Australia, also have a partnership uh, with uh, Park Run, and they, they prescribe it. So it's part of a social prescription uh, advocacy. And uh, so when you go into a doctor's office, you may have uh, issues with blood pressure or type 2 diabetes or, um, or things like that. And uh, they actually prescribe Park Run. So, this, you know, they might uh, also, it might be in collaboration with other things like um, medicines and all that sort of thing, of course, too. But they say, this is so accessible, it's free, get out there, enjoy, and also network with people because it helps the mental well-being of people also. Okay. Um, Henderson Lake Park Run, I've talked about it before. It's two loops of our beautiful Henderson Lake Park. It's a flat route. It's safe, and we always, at Park Run, end up with a coffee, whether it's in Italy, Australia, Lethbridge, Alberta. In fact, here we go to the Japanese gardens at Cleo's Cafe, so if you want to tune in for a coffee after, that's part of that important social network working too, is to join us for a coffee. So you'll see Mike, and you'll see Barb, and you'll see us, and all the other, certainly the volunteers, the uh, majority of the volunteers, but many other people join us for a coffee at, uh, at the Japanese gardens after. 
Um, so, uh, it's all about inclusivity, as I said, diversity. Uh, we want all the community to come out uh, to join us. We'd like you to come out and join us, the members of SACPA. I know many of you out there have or have been thinking about it. I've talked to many people about it around town. But uh, yeah, we'd just love to, to communicate our, our uh, park run uh, uh, um, uh, event, that, that's for sure. And as I said, how we get started, um, tune into uh, Park Run Canada, get your, get your, your, uh, your barcode, and you're ready to tune in to us at 9 o'clock local at Kinsman Park, or Kinsman uh, Picnic Shelter in Henderson Lake Park. And we'll do the video. We'll do the video. Okay, very good. Okay. Want to know how to park run? Of course you do. Who doesn't? We'll be taking you through the common misconceptions and showing you what really goes down at a park run. First up, you'll surely need the running form and experience of Usain Bolt to take part, right? Nope! Doesn't matter what's your style. Whether it's the zombie, river dance, dance hall queen, and a... Um... I do not know what that is. Worried about finishing last? You should be! We'll gather a huge crowd and proceed to laugh and throw things at you. Ha! <laughs> Only kidding. No one finishes last at a park run. Volunteer tail walkers make sure everyone finishes. No one's left behind. No, no need for the cockiness. You'll experience an overriding sense of loneliness while we shout bad things at you from far Fine. away. No Mace McMace face! Ha! <laughs> Only kidding. Park run is a social event. And everyone loves grabbing a brew and having a chat after. It's a race, right? I mean, look at them. Grr. Well, it's actually not a race. It's whatever you want it to be. See, no one takes it too seriously. Well, there, there's always one. You're gonna need all the gear, right? Train us with gold wings, an aerodynamic NASA design like her cat suit. Yeah. Five gallon water backpack with filled with hot chocolate. Nice. And a sn snorkel with some flippers. Or better still, just wear what you want and bring the dog along. Or just come dressed as a camel every week instead. Go, camel lady! This is your Everest, people. Motivational words! Etc, etc. It's actually as easy or as tough as you want it to be. Walk, jog, or run. It's up to you. You're in the park, moving your limbs. That's pretty awesome as it is. You better know what to do at the finish, otherwise it'll be pretty humiliating. Yep, people will throw things at your face again. Just kidding, it's easy. Stroll through the finish, and a helpful volunteer will hand you a token. Scan your barcode and boom, that's it! You can check out your time later on. It's one less park run until your next milestone. Join the park run movement. We'd love to see you there. Remember, everyone's welcome in a park run, and no one finishes last. Voiceover guy, signing off. Find a local event near you at parkrun.com. Thank you. Well, thank you, Jim. Um, uh, you know, that sounds wonderful. Um, I'm certainly not going to run, but uh, now that you've mentioned walking, you know, that, that doesn't sound too, too uh, jarring for my, my bones. We want to thank LSCO, who provided this room free of charge. Thank you for patronizing their lunch counter. We thank the University of Lethbridge for their ongoing support. Thanks to the Lethbridge Herald and other media for their coverage and support. And thanks to Shaw Rogers TV for recording our sessions with Ryan Craddock over there. You can watch SOCPA on Shaw Spotlight TV. Or you can go to our SOCPA.ca archives to watch SOCPA that has already taken place. Next week, speaker and topic are Dr. Fritz Panakuk, who will be talking about Alberta, a new wacky. <laughs> we ask those waiting to ask questions to please line up along this wall. Please state your name and your question briefly. Please, no long preludes or stories. We expect respectful and polite discourse. If you prefer to write the question, I will read your question for you, only if it's legibly written and signed. Thank you, that's very nice. My name is Mark Gattel, 
And uh, it's really nice to see that this is free, but everything costs money. So you've got your website, you've got your scanners and everything. So I'm wondering where does the financing come from? And also a little bit about your organization. Are you organized as a not-for-profit organization? And at what level? Canada, province, every city has to apply for um, a registration with, with the Societies Act or whatever it's called. And uh, yeah, and then also, do you have liability insurance? Because that's another thing. We're a non-profit, it's like SACPA too, but we're always hit with the, the need for liability insurance, which is quite hefty. So, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> all this bureaucracy. And I'm not a lawyer, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, 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 that's right. Um, it is free forever, and it is free forever as a result of we have, we do have sponsors. And we have, for example, we have a brand new global sponsor right now, and that is the Brooks uh, uh, Shoe uh, Corporation, who signed a, a multi-year uh, agreement uh, uh, with, uh, with Park Run to, to provide support. And uh, one thing I should say about Park Run, it's not super expensive to even run globally. Yes, there is some organization at the in London, England, to make it work every every Saturday morning across across the globe. So we do have some a very very few hired people at at the very core in London to make sure the the results get uploaded and and all that sort of thing and and to to answer questions from events that are putting in the results every Saturday. But the machine is is pretty simple, and I, I stress that in, in the in the presentation. There's, um, uh, you know, we do have computer software that's upgraded. That is a, a bit of a cost, of course, but that's that's why we have uh, the people like uh, Brooks. And also we do have, I should uh, also point out, on the website, if you go into the website, we do have a store. So they do sell merchandise. You can have your very own barcode that's uh, on your wrist. You can have a wrist barcode. You can have uh, a card, like a credit card. Uh, I have one of those personally, uh, and so does Ellen, I think, or maybe a wrist. I think Ellen has the wrist one. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, but uh, you can buy things. You can buy shirts. You can buy long sleeve and shorts, uh, sleeve shirts, um, and that sort of thing. So there is a bit of merchandise sales associated with it. Um, and, and sponsors. Also, there are other sponsors. Brooks is the, the global sponsor. But uh, in UK, for example, a sponsor is the National Health Service. I might have mentioned that before. There's a partnership between Park Run and, uh, and the NHS in, in, in the UK. So. Oh, yeah, yeah I'll get that. Yeah. So in, in terms of uh, insurance, we do, it is a not-for-profit. It is a not-for-profit uh, globally. Uh, and, uh, and in UK, it is actually a registered charity also. Not so in Canada. It's not yet a registered charity, but is a, a not-for-profit in Canada and all other countries in the world. We carry um, global um, uh, liability assurance. Um, I believe it's either five or $10 million uh, uh, for any, uh, any things that may happen. Uh, so. Uh, uh, it is it is insured. One thing, uh, whenever you start an event, uh, for example, when we started our event here in, in Lethbridge about five years ago, we, we went to the city and, of course, uh, they said, yeah, this is a great idea. We'd like more people to come into our park. And one of the questions was liability insurance. We do have that, and we, we have that coverage uh, uh, for the, uh, the uh, organization as a whole. So, mm-hmm. Um, and funding. Yes, when we, we started out, not the case anymore, but um, five years ago, you had to, uh, the local organizers had to put in about, I think it was $5,000 in order to initiate an event. Um, and and uh, the city of Lethbridge came forward in a big way and uh, practically covered the whole uh, whole $5,000, which was super. I Just a, a little bit of a plug for our city, our, our great city, is that uh, when uh, I initially talked to the city about having a park run in Lethbridge, um, I was 
about two minutes into the presentation going through something like this. And uh, I said, well, we need to talk about location. Of course, there's a, you know, three or four locations that were potential in, in Lethbridge, including Henderson Lake and, um, and Nicholas Sharon Park and the fledgling uh, Legacy Park at that time. Um, and they said, oh, it's a no-brainer. We're going to have you. It's Henderson Lake. You've got to have it Henderson Lake. That's our centerpiece um, attraction in uh, in Lethbridge, and that was it. So um, right away they said we we want you to be here. Park Run is a good thing for Lethbridge, and they've been supporters ever since. In ter in terms of dollars and promotion too, uh, the the parks uh, parks manager and the team make sure that uh, we're we're ready to go in terms of pathway clearance. On uh, on Saturdays, so yeah. Thanks very much, uh, Tim, for your presentation. Uh, my name is Knut Peterson, uh, and my question relates to: uh, Do you ever get any pushback from from recreational walkers and people using the Henderson Lake uh, on a regular basis? Uh, and also, I would like to know if you're planning on introducing uh, motorized recreational users. Uh, for example, people that are not able to walk, and, and uh, I saw a picture of a young lady biking in the video. Uh, is there any um, plans in that direction? Um. In terms of bikers, no. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, we don't. Globally, uh, I think the, the decision was made a long time ago that it would be it'd be uh, foot uh, foot motivation and, and not bikers. At one point in time, there were uh, at some of the big big park runs. They had bikers at the front as a sort of guide a guide people. Uh, they don't do that anymore either because of safety issues. Um, but uh, I would I, I didn't um, comment too much about it. But um, <clears throat> we um, when I say we welcome. Everybody, I mean everybody, and that includes uh, people uh, with disabilities, whether they're uh, physical or, or mental disabilities. And we have had people uh, with with um, severe disabilities that that have uh, motorized uh, wheelchairs, and they are certainly welcome, extremely welcome. Uh, any anyone with any any form of disability, that that's for sure. But in terms of bikes, no, uh, uh, bikes are not allowed on the course. One of the one of the global things about Park Run is that we we do our event uh, and and realize that we're sharing the pathways, sharing the parks with other people. We don't close down the pathways for for Park Run on Saturday morning. No one does around the world in, in their various Park Runs. We share the paths and. Um, it's never been uh, a major issue uh, in, in Lethbridge uh, whatsoever. We just tell our people, you know, if you're fast and you're and you see people ahead and they might be chatting on the on the pathway, or there might be some bikes or a, or a scooter or something like that, just go around, just go around the pathway, get out in the, on the grass. We share the pathways, we share the course with every everyone in the community. So it's uh, very much a share thing, but. Uh, uh, people with disabilities are certainly welcome with their motorized uh, um, uh, uh, vehicles and support. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hi, Jim. Thank you very much for your presentation today. Uh, my name is Lori Schultz. I'm, my question is in relation to the social prescription, and I know um, that has been very big in, in England. Um, and recently, I, I thought I'd heard a news tidbit. Yeah, sorry. I got it. Thanks. A uh, news tidbit that locally people were, um, or doctors locally were prescribing. I'm wondering if Park Run has um, collaborated with the medical community or the mental health community about um, writing prescriptions. Uh, has there been any? collaboration or contact or any liaison uh, work in that regard? 
Um, in terms of formal collaboration, no. Uh, not in Canada or the United States yet. Um, I think it, it's probably coming, and uh, certainly from, from our point of view within the uh, Henderson Lake Park Run, the Lethbridge Park Run community, we see the, the opportunities there to, to have partnership. But that's very much up to Park Run Canada. We do have one person that sort of leads the Park Run charge in Canada, and uh, I think we're going to be seeing more more about that in the near future. We do have um, general practitioners and other doctors and also uh, psychiatrists that uh, are park runners in the in the Lethbridge Park Run community. So they're very uh, they're very keen about park run. You may have one of them, one of the GPs, maybe one of the ones you're you're talking about, and she certainly would be prescribing uh, park run to to her patients. That's for sure. Um, but it's you know what what I've seen globally uh, in particularly in Australia and the UK is something that I'm sure is going to sort of uh, transfer and transition to many many countries in the world. I think it makes so much sense. It's uh, the ease, the accessibility, the diversity, and the freeness of it that allows people to participate uh, very simply. And uh, and th there's lots of documentation and research that has gone on, uh, particularly in, in, the, um, in, the, uh, in the Australia organization of uh, general practitioners. In fact, they have a document, uh, they did significant research, and their GPs, uh, there's a stat here, 69% of the general practi practitioners in, in, um, in Australia prescribe um, uh, Park Run actively every day. So it's, it's part, so when they come in, they just don't throw pills at people. They say, we want you to get out and do things. And by the way, we have something called Park Run, Park Walk, that you can do every Saturday morning. And you can couple that with other, other physical activities. And, uh, but this is something you can do each and every week as a routine uh, physical activity and social activity uh, for, for, your, for your mental wellness, too. So... Um, we do have a community of uh, doctors that that uh, certainly encourage uh, their patients to participate here in Lethbridge too. But I think, as I said, we'll hear more about uh, the formalization of that in the future. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Lori, for that question because uh, that leads into my question about research. <laughs> and I'm glad you talked about the Australian research. I'm just wondering if, um, if there's any research being done here locally, such as at the University of Lethbridge in the Department of kin kinesiology, kinesiology or in psychology or with local psychiatrists um, to, to actually quantify and qualify the, um, uh, the benefits of uh, the social aspect and uh, I would I would recommend if you haven't maybe to then get in touch with these departments because it would be wonderful to know um, exactly what what is happening and we had a speaker here at SACPA last year who was from the LSEO who talked about the uh, social aspects of of this branch of the LSEO and how that was related uh, federally to other social things so right here there's also the social there's uh, a person who's involved with trying to get people more involved actively and socially because of the benefits to uh, to mental health. So it seems like this is uh, this is something that we all need, and uh, this is one free way of getting it. So, do you have any comments about the research aspects? Thanks. I'm not uh, not aware Bev, of any local research done. Um, in, in Lethbridge or Alberta or Canada, for that matter, there's a wealth of research in the UK and Australia. And uh, there, are, there are universities, the College of GPs and uh, the College of Psychiatrists in, in the UK, particularly with NHS, have, have looked, have done a lot of research. But it's, um, I do know there's one, uh, one professor at the University of Lethbridge that does a lot of research on, he's within the kinesiology department and an avid runner in, in town. And um, he, he does a lot of research on, um, on fitness and 
uh, you know, how that's so, so important in terms of mental health. Um, but uh, in terms of parkrun specifically, I don't know of any research that's been, been done in Canada yet, anyway. So, mm -hmm. but a very good, very good idea, and I think it's certainly open to a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, research, for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hi there, Mike. <laughs> I'm Mike McKaig, and I've been involved with Park Run for about five years, I think. Uh, a couple of little things that I have thought about as Jim was talking that I would like to emphasize for this audience. Number one is the Park Run community at Henderson Lake is the most unjudgmental group of people that I'm associated with anywhere. I have never heard any judgmental comment. Uh, if we have a really slow person on the, nobody says anything, we all stand there and wait. The other thing I wanted to point out is that when the, Jim talked about the 36 minute finish time. Well, <clears throat> I don't know about you, but I can't do 5K in 36 minutes. And our average finish is about between one hour and maybe one hour and 15, 18 minutes. So, um, and th there's never any hurry. We, d we don't stand there and say, what's going on? Where are they? We do our visiting and wait for the tail walker to, to get back. And the tail walker, of course, is, is walking with whoever's the, the less speediest of the group. I think that was it. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry, it wasn't a question, Jim. <laughs> no, 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 that's okay. No, it, it, so, yeah, thanks very much, Mike. The, um, yeah, a very, a very good point. When I say 36, that's, of course, the average. So we have people that, that routinely do the park, uh, park run in about 19, 20 minutes each week. So when you aver average, average it, that's how we get the 36 minutes. Because, yeah, as Mike said, we have people that, that take an hour and 10 minutes, an hour and 15 minutes, and that's totally fine. That's totally fine. And uh, again, it's about participation getting out. But one of, one of the other things in that little uh, funny video that you saw too, it's it's, it is about participation, and it's a very welcoming environment. And we've had people that, that have come out initially, and they said, well, geez, you know, they're sort of in the background. They come up, they sort of sneak up on, on the crowd uh, that, that comes out every Saturday morning. And uh, so initially, initially there, some of them are fairly shy, and they, they hold back. But uh, then they see that we are welcoming people. You know, we, uh, we, ch we have a cheering section. We have cowbells. In fact, Mike bought a brand new cowbell for us about uh, five months ago, so, which you can hear all across par Henderson Lake Park from one end to the other. But uh, yeah, it's, it's welcoming. It's, uh, we encourage everyone to come out. And, uh, and uh, after, after a week or so, you're, you're part of the crew. You're part of the crowd. You're part of the park run community. And, uh, and that community, that community, sense of community is an important thing to the park run success across the world. Um, I don't need to tell you. You, know, you. you hear lots of controversial issues from one Thursday at, at noon to the next Thursday. And um, sometimes it's good to have a happy thing. Sometimes it's great to have something that puts a smile on people's face. And we like to think that Park Run does a very good job of that for about 300,000 people every week at 9 o'clock. So um, be part of that crowd. It's, it's just great. Join in. Uh, have a coffee after. If you just want to join us for coffee after, that's great too. Uh, just tune in to us and, and get to know what, uh, what we're all about. Um, or just come out and volunteer. Uh, if, if you don't, you know, uh, Beth said, you know, yeah, we can uh, we we like to have walkers yes we do and but if you just want to be a volunteer I'm looking at one volunteer prime volunteer core volunteer of uh, the park run community in Lethbridge and that's Katrina and uh, uh, Katrina and her uh, and her son collaborate out just about every week, and uh, she is uh, he's, she's a star volunteer every, every week every single week of of the year so 
Can't thank you enough. <laughs> this, by the way, the presentation that you saw is, is thanks to Katrina for that. But um, it's um, our engine is volunteers, people like Katrina, like Barb and Mike and Alan. They they make it work. And uh, if you'd like to just come out and, and join us as a volunteer, that's great too. Well, I don't really have a question, but. <laughs> Uh, Park Run has meant so much to me personally. We started in 2019. Mike actually did four park runs on his record because your record is always there for the rest of your life, whether you like it or not. Um, I have finished 88 actual park runs, uh, 87 of them at Henderson Lake. I did one in Edmonton. So I am a park run tourist. And in two weeks, I'm doing Toronto. So there you go. Anyway, I would just like to thank Jim and Ellen Carter, who started this ball rolling in Lethbridge in 2019. So I'd never heard of park run. But he used to knit natter at us here at Satpaw about this thing called park run. And we got out. And then we started volunteering. So of my 88 uh, park runs, actually 20 of them have been tail walker. Because I love tail walking because I get to chat, which I'm, I kind of like. But mostly park run allowed me with run walking because I don't run 5K all at once. Not anymore. Maybe I used to back in the day. But anyway, it allows you time with your own head to sort things out and especially after COVID and Mike was going through cancer and all that stuff, you got a lot of stuff to sort out in your head and 5K about does it. And you know, 40 minutes, that takes care of that business. So it's meant a lot to me and I just thank Jim and Ellen and Ottawa, actually good things came from Ottawa to Alberta, park run, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Thank you also for the testimonials. And uh, thank you to Jim. Uh, join me in uh, thanking Jim for coming and uh, appraising us of something that wasn't controversial. <laughs> thank you. We'll see you next week. <laughs>